Hello, hi everyone. Welcome back to Wu Can Cook. My name is Wesley, and this is a show where we are slowly cooking our way through all of the food from my childhood. Today, we're diving back into our series dedicated to Filipino comfort food classics with a shot at a chicken and rice plate dish known as chicken tocino. For those unfamiliar, chicken tocino is made using a braised then seared chicken thigh, specifically in that order, to create its simultaneously tender, crispy, and saucy texture. Perhaps most notable about this dish is its sugar-forward marinade, iconically made using pineapple juice for acidity, as well as a bit of ketchup to give it its iconic red color. Those following this channel may know by now, I'm always a sucker for Asian American cuisine featuring ketchup because I find its occurrence in Asian cuisine to be really interesting. While this dish is commonly made using bacon or pork belly, tocino translating to bacon in Spanish, the use of chicken or beef is also fairly common and is often served with a side of rice and fried eggs, as we often do in Filipino cuisine. Maybe most interesting to me, though, is this dish's use of the marinade liquid itself as its mode of braising, which, though I think I disagree with this approach, does make it a wildly simple and easy dish to throw together for weeknight meals. Okay, so let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, as you'll come to notice momentarily, pretty much this entire dish is built around its sugar-forward marinade, which will serve in not only tenderizing our chicken, but also as our braising liquid and our sauce element on the plate too, which is awesome. So up first, I'm starting off with some aromatic veggies for our marinade. This is four cloves of crushed and minced garlic to start, followed by one inch or about one tablespoon of fine minced ginger and the whites of three green onions sliced thinly. Then next, we're taking these reserved greens of our green onions, slicing them thinly on a bias and setting them aside for our final finishing garnish later on. Next up in a large mixing bowl, I've got a gallon Ziploc bag here that we're going to toss everything into to make cleanup a lot easier later on. As you might notice, our marinade is going to lean pretty heavily into sugars here, consequently giving our chicken a sweet and savory quality on the plate. So up first here is four tablespoons of soy sauce and a half teaspoon of white pepper to start for our savory, followed next by two tablespoons of sweet chili sauce and a single tablespoon of brown sugar to round this out. Then next, this is a half cup of pineapple juice going in. Pineapple juice is high in acidity, meaning that it's going to aid quite a bit in tenderizing our chicken today. Finally, rounding out our marinade is two tablespoons of ketchup going in. This is not only going to contribute to the iconic sweet and savory quality of our chicken, but is also going to tint everything red, which this dish is known for. Next up going in is our chicken thigh, about a pound's worth, followed by our garlic, ginger, and the whites of my green onions. Then we're closing up the bag and giving everything a thorough toss to combine. Finally, I'm setting this aside to marinate in the fridge for a minimum of a half an hour or a maximum of four hours. Any longer and that pineapple juice is going to over tenderize that chicken. I think I let mine go here for about two hours today. Two hours later, over on the stove, I have my wok heating up over medium-low heat today. Then I'm adding everything to the wok. Yes, you heard me, everything, marinade and all, plus about a cup's worth of water, adding additional water as needed. I like to do this by rinsing out the bag itself to get anything that may have been left behind. We're keeping this at a medium-low heat, then letting this all simmer for about an hour. Now, real quick digression, as some of you may know, in many of the Chinese, Korean, and Thai recipes that we have done, more commonly you might see things cooked in the reverse order here, wherein the chicken would be added to a heated and oiled wok, then seared, tossed, and braised following the fry portion. Personally, I prefer this order because the marinade element, particularly sugary ones like ours today, is going to cause trouble during the fry portion and will likely burn when put over heat. Chicken tocino, however, is iconically cooked in this order to create its saucy quality, so here we go. 
About an hour into our simmer, I've stopped adding water so that we may simply let it all reduce down to a glaze. I'm incorporating some frequent agitation at this point to keep things from burning, then once things have reduced, I'm adding 4 tablespoons of peanut oil around the sides of the wok and letting the chicken sear for 2 minutes undisturbed, again still over medium low heat here. Two minutes later, I'm bringing my fire up to high heat now, then giving everything a quick toss for some baby wok hay, then removing our chicken from the wok to reveal why we don't sear sugary marinades. Not to fear though, a little bit of scrubbing and we'll be good as new. Rounding everything out is going to be our eggs today. I'm reheating my wok as hot as possible now, then adding 4 tablespoons of peanut oil and as always, long yao for that nice non-stick surface. We're gonna do some lacy high heat fried eggs today, which in my opinion works best in a round bottom wok because of the way that the oil pulls up so nicely. I'm adding my egg directly to the center of the wok, then letting the oil submerge the egg, effectively shallow frying the whole thing. Then I'm using my spatula to spoon a bit of oil over the top to finish our sunny side up egg. Back over on the cutting board, we're starting off with a scoop of rice using some wet hands to shape one of those snowball shapes, then topping everything off with a bit of furikake. Then next, this is a healthy pinch of our chicken tocino, followed by our fried eggs, a pinch of our reserved greens of our green onions, and we're ready to eat. Okay, so while I may disagree with the methodology today, I do think that the results speak for themselves because this is some d good chicken, y'all. The long marinade and braise yields a deeply tender and flavorful piece of chicken that is not nearly as overwhelmingly sweet as I was initially concerned for, given the sheer amount of sugars that we've added. In actuality though, I think a lot of these sugars cook off and mellow out during the braise, resulting in a sweet, savory, and umami forward quality that feels very quintessential to Filipino cuisine. Then the finishing reduction and sear that we've incorporated yields some nice crisped up edges to our chicken for a wonderfully saucy and crispy finish. Finally, although yes I will admit that it was kind of a pain to clean the wok after cooking our chicken, had we seared then braised our chicken as would be my intuition, I don't think that we would have ended up with the same results simply because I don't think that we would have been able to incorporate the marinade quite the same way. Plus a nice added bonus, it makes the cooking process dead simple too. Okay, so that's it everyone. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you give this one a shot. For those who are new to the channel, this one is part of a larger series dedicated to classic Filipino dishes. So definitely check out that series next if you haven't yet because there's a lot of these. As always, like, comment, subscribe, share, be nice internetters and I'll see you soon. Bye.